I'm in Rockford, Illinois, and uh, I'm working on a Bonanza. The plane behind me is beautiful. It's a 2002, but the paint on it is only two years old. So I got here around nine. It is 1045 right now. I got the plane washed. I'm gonna start polishing on it. I think what I'd like to do is, so it's Friday today. I'd like to try and get the tops of the wings polished and maybe start on the fuselage. So the tops of the wings should be pretty easy. Um, but there, there are exposed rivet heads and um, you can see the, the exposed rivets heads are actually missing some paint. I think that happened during painting. The paint just didn't stick on them properly, but sometimes you can see the same thing when you buff something too hard. Where's the road? So that's my hotel right there. Actually, it's a motel. It's one of those motels with outdoor uh, doors on everyone. Probably not the best decision, but it's the nearest hotel. Problem is, I don't know where the entrance is to drive in, because there's so much snow. I think it's here. I'm gonna have to find out. Otherwise, we're going to be crunching some bumpers. Yeah, that worked. Good morning. Saturday morning. I washed the Bonanza last night and actually got started with a little bit of paint correction on the left wing. Um, it, it's definitely ending up a lot brighter. Um, there's just this gray dullness on the paint that you can't really see until you polish it. So we'll do some before and afters on the other side. Today's plan is ambitious. Today I plan on paint correcting the whole thing and maybe coating the whole thing as well. We'll have to see how it goes, but it's gonna be really cold tomorrow. And even though I'm in a heated hangar, I'm not gonna take my chances with it being too cold to coat. So I'm gonna do my best to get as much done as possible today. If, you, uh, if you've watched this vlog once or twice, you know that none of my predictions ever pan out. So I set up a little uh, tape line here to show you the before and after. And uh, come to think of it, I have a paint thickness gauge, but that's in my car. So we're gonna go get that. But my car is out in the snow. But I wanna show you basically how little paint we remove. Because that, that's a question we get sometimes. Is how much paint is removed during a paint correction? Ugh. So now you see the, just a little bit of hesitation that was on my face when I was starting to talk about the paint thickness gauge. We'll have to do a little calibration and see if this will work now that it's cold soak. We may have to let it warm up a bit. Okay, so this is the paint thickness gauge here and um, it uses eddy currents to measure how much material there's between the substrate and the top. So this is just a piece of aluminum. If we measure it right now, um, it's not calibrated, it's saying minus 50. So if we press and hold zero, then put it on there again. So now it knows that this is zero. 
So when I add this test film, which is 50 microns, plus or minus one, it is going to read, actually we're still trying to zero. Hold on. Okay, should be reading zero, let's test. Okay, so now if we put on this test piece, it's reading 51.3, so within a 1%, that, that's acceptable for our purposes. We're gonna measure the paint on both sides, see what kind of variation we have. So we're at 85, 84.2, 83.9, 87. So, so we have a lot of variation, uh, more variation here than what we're gonna remove with the polish. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the gauge right on that rivet here, or, or actually right in between these two rivets. So we're gonna mark that location. So we're at 80. We'll take another measurement here. Okay, so we're, we're at about 80 right there. We're gonna do a paint correction here, and then we'll see what we're at after the paint correction. So we're just using the rotary, hyper polish, yellow pad, my uh, standard combo here. <laughs> the tape. So we got the polish residue off. Now let's measure again. So the tape line was here. But 80.6. I don't know if it was this one or this one. That one's 86. This one's 80. So I, th I think it was this one, but we'll have to look on the camera. The other thing that happens is when we polish, it heats up the paint ever so slightly. So that's going to expand the paint as well. But overall, I mean, we, we barely removed any paint. If, if I could measure how much paint I removed, I would estimate it be less than a micron. The margin of error on this tool is big enough where I can't statistically claim that you know, I removed one micron of paint because it, it's just not capable of being that accurate. But um, the thing we use this tool for the most is just to get a feel for how thick paint is, how much we can remove. Let's say there is a deep scratch here. If I have enough paint to work with, I can do a more aggressive paint correction and get that scratch out. 80 is relatively thin, so I'm not going to be very aggressive um, with this paint. And luckily this doesn't need it, but if you look at the rivet heads here, you can see that the edges of the rivet heads are very, very thin. The top of it, 400, okay? The top of that rivet head is at 400. That one's at 320. But the edges are, I don't even know if I can get to that. The edges have no paint because the way, when it's painted, the paint just kind of shrinks up on top and pulls away from the edges so we don't have good coverage there. So high performance engines generate a lot of heat and that heat's gotta go somewhere. And it's not so much a big deal when you're at altitude, cruising, got a lot of airflow going through the engine. But when you're sitting on the ground or, or when you're climbing and your airspeed isn't quite as high because you're, you're trading speed for altitude, um, you gotta have a way to get rid of that heat. So some airplanes have cowl flaps, which is what this thing here is. And if you take a look, you can see it sticks out. And um, as air from the propeller moves over there, it creates a low pressure area, which helps suck out heat. So that's really useful when you're taxiing. It's not very useful when you're trying to reduce drag to go fast, because there, there's one on each side actually here. Um, this one's around the exhaust. So you can see that that's a pretty notable area. Um, fortunately, these close. So I'm gonna close up the cowl flaps and that will allow me to polish here. It, it allows me to polish on here a little bit better and I can get to the gear door on this side. So we did an initial pass with the rotary. Because this black paint is turning out to be rather soft, um, we need to finish it with a DA. 
And for that, you guys haven't seen this tool yet. This is like my favorite tool ever. It's a Mirka Cero sander. Um, the power supply is separate. So all you're carrying is motor and it's a brushless motor. So it has a lot of power, but it's also really quiet. Um, it is a dual action machine, as you can see. So it, it, it has a more random motion and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't cause holograms. So we're gonna use this to finish the black metallic surfaces to make sure we have the best possible finish on here. this area on the aircraft that has a lot of holograms and again being a darker color it shows that kind of stuff I've also noticed that the black metallic paint is softer so it scratches more easily which would also explain why there's, there's holograms on there and not on the white so a process you use on white may not necessarily work on silver so let, let's take a look and see what I'm seeing here so you see all those radiating scratches out of there Okay, those are holograms. That's what we call them. They're caused by typically a wool pad um, on a rotary with too heavy of a compound on it. And the problem is that when this was done, it probably looks perfect because the oils and the polishing oil went in there um, and, and filled up all those scratches, right? When you wipe it with alcohol or you give it a few months to run out or, or weeks to run out, you can see that this isn't excellent at all. So that, that's the problem we're gonna address. These are a little bit deeper scratches. That, that's why I think they're, they're caused by a wool pad. Now, there's a few ways we can address this. So we have the dual action polisher, we have the rotary polisher. The rotary polisher is the same tool that caused this problem, but I'm using it at a slow speed. I'm using it with a nice polish and also I'm using a foam pad, I'm not using a wool pad. So I might be able to get perfect results with just this, right? And, and I'm gonna show you how to check for that so we don't fall in the same trap where two months down the line it looks like crap again. The other solution is a dual action polisher. So this machine, when it turns kind of as a random pattern like that, um, because we have some deeper scratches, if this is the only tool you have, you'd probably start with a microfiber cutting pad or, or something that's a little bit more aggressive initially, get those deep scratches out, and then transition to a finishing step. But ju just for comparison's sake, I'm gonna use the same polish, same pad, different tools. We're gonna run down the tape line and see what kind of um, differences there are in process. Now, probably, my guess, here's probably what I'm gonna end up doing, I'm going to hit it with the rotary because the rotary has more power. The rotary puts more power down. I'm going to use the rotary to get rid of those scratches. And then instead of feathering down with the rotary and getting it perfect with that, we're going to jump to the dual action and get those holograms out. But first, we're going to get a tape line on there and compare what each tool does. So first rotary hyperpolish, make sure to shake it. And hyperpolish is a little different in that you have to spray the trigger hard so you get a nice even mist. If you pull it slowly, it just kind of drips out. That's all we need. Now let's get to work. We're gonna do one pass, um, which is gonna be left, right, up, down after we get it all primed. Okay. Now, we're gonna switch to the dual action polisher. Same pad, same hyper polish. Okay, got some product on there. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do one pass after we get it primed in. So before I start wiping the polish residue off, I just wanna show you what that looks like. So you see that now? That's polish residue. You can see how each tool has a different pattern. 
Um, if I was using a really abrasive wool pad and, and heavy polish residue, the, the lines you see here would actually be scratches. Same on this side. So the scratches caused by a rotary are called holograms. The scratches caused by a dual action machine is typically referred to as micro marring. So I'm going to wipe this residue off using a microfiber towel. I'm actually going to pull the tape off as well. So we got the polish residue off. However, that, that, that's not the end of the story. So let, let's take a quick look. So this side looks pretty good, okay? Up there, and then we go here where we did nothing, and we go here where we used the dual action. So both sides look really good. Um, we don't want to be lulled into complacency because of that. Okay, so th this all looks really good. It looks like both sides correct it nicely. But remember those polishing oils I was telling you about. So we're going to take some panel wipe, infamous panel wipe. This is made with the tiers of detailers. Okay, we'll spray some on. And here's the real test is when we strip those oils out, does it still look perfect? Okay. And I'm kind of hoping it doesn't just so I can show you the before and after. Kind of disappointed, both sides look really good. I was hoping that there would be hidden holograms on this side, but I'm not seeing anything. So here's the before again. And here's dual action. So both conditions um, produce similar results. Now if I keep doing this over the whole plane, and I don't clean my pads, I'm almost certain that eventually that rotary is gonna start throwing holograms. So you have to constantly check. Wipe it with panel wipe and double check. Also, the other side, the dual action, if that pad gets dirty, it can also throw um, micro marring. And the other thing, as those pads kinda of get loaded up, they won't cut as effective anymore. So it, it produced really nice results now, Halfway down the plane, if I don't clean those pads, you know, it, it may not be as effective of a cut. So those deep hologram scratches you saw underneath there, um, they might not be coming out and, and you lose effectiveness. So, so those are all just some things to think about. Good morning. It is Sunday morning. Um, the plane is mostly paint correct. I got a little bit of wiping left to do on the underside, but then it's going to be ready to coat. Yeah, I just turned the heat on. It's, it's two degrees outside. It's about 45, 50 degrees in here. The aircraft surfaces are still at about 45, so uh, I'm going to wait for that to warm up a little bit. But, but while the plane's warming up, I can work on the underside, get that done, um, get everything coated, and head on home. I just came back from a little break, a little bit of food, a little bit of Red Bull, still not a sponsor. Coating is going well, the wings are done. I, uh, I'm gonna work on the fuselage now, kinda work my way forward, and uh, then settle for the long grind underside. A little bit cold, uh, turn that heat back on. Um, and unfortunately the underside doesn't get any of the heat because it's a uh, 
it's a radiating heat system. So top side gets warm, underside doesn't. So if you're new to this vlog, you probably haven't seen coating yet. So this is what coating looks like. We get some liquid, put on a microfiber applicator pad, pick little segments to work in. So we'll do this section here. So get it spread on there. And then I have two microfiber towels. One with the label, one without a label. The one without a label is my first step towel. So I use that to kind of get the bulk of the coating off. Um, we take our second towel, which is the uh, one with the label. Since I only use this for removing the last little bits of residue, it doesn't get as saturated. So um, I can ensure good product removal. Now I can feel where, uh, where I start and stop because the difference in friction. So this isn't done, this is done. So if I take this bottle, you, you can tell that difference in friction. Um, if I put it up here, nothing happens. If I put it here, I, I can't get it to stay, right? In, in this angle and this angle, they're the same. It's not like this is steeper. So not coated yet, coated. So taking a step back, the reason I do this, um, you kind of see the coating coming on here. It looks like a very light oil. The reason we coat airplanes is because airplanes have to stand up to a lot. So you have oil on the belly, you have exhaust running all across the belly, and then as you fly you have um, UV exposure to a higher degree than say a car. And you're also dealing with the larger vehicle. So you have all this paint, might I add pretty expensive paint um, that, that needs to be protected. And, and people usually think that waxing their airplane is a good way to protect it. But the reality is that for the amount of work it takes to wax an airplane, um, it, it, there's just not a good payoff in protection. You know, you can spend all day waxing a plane and within one or two flights, that protection is all but gone. So we have sealants. Sealants are typically easier to apply, um, but you still have to go over the whole plane. So what a coating does, a coating gives you a level of protection that's better than wax, better than the sealant. Um, it, this, is, this is bonding to the paint. So, so that coating is not gonna come off if I spray it with alcohol or degreaser. Um, the only way to get that coating off is to buff it off or sand it off. I mean, paint stripper would take it off too, to be honest. But um, we don't have to reapply this in six months, in a year. You know, th this coating is gonna be good for probably a thousand hours. On a plane like this, that, that could be five years of flying, could be 10 years of flying. So yeah, it's more expensive because we've got to prep the surface properly. Um, you know, the coating doesn't make the plane shiny. It's the paint correction that makes the plane shiny. And the, the reason this costs what it does is because there's a lot of prep involved. The, the coating itself, it adds some gloss, but it's not going to make the airplane shiny, right? Like the, the paint correction is what's going to make it look good. The, the coating would just lock that in if we, if we didn't treat the surface beforehand. And the paint correction also removes any embedded staining or oxidation. Um, both of those prevent good adhesion. So like most things, it, it, it's on the prep. And, and the paint correction is just part of the prep. Um, you know, the, the nice benefit of it is, of course, that your airplane's going to look amazing. It's better protection than wax or sealants for a much longer period of time. But it's a lot more work to install. And quite frankly, if you install it wrong, um, like I said, this has to be buffed off or sanded off. So it's not something that I'd be comfortable just giving a bottle to someone and be like, hey, here you go. Go coat your own plane, right?
this plane is finally done. Took a little bit longer than I was expecting. Um, in part, I'm just tired. I haven't been sleeping very well. Uh, so that, that's just part of it. I'm not as efficient, but plane looks absolutely beautiful. I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's gonna be so much easier to wash for the owner and uh, he won't have to wax it ever again or put any sealant on it. You know, all you're gonna do is just, you know, you get all the bugs sprayed with some no rinse, wipe it off. You can see here's some included no rinse. Um, if, you're, if you're new to this channel, I did another A36 Bonanza, um, Tom Haynes is actually, in episode five, part two. And that was a very different process because that's an older paint system being restored. And, and that's interesting to watch as well. So if you're looking at your plane, it's not this glossy um, and it's dull and chalky, we can revert that. You don't have to repaint your aircraft and it'll look close to this. Not quite like this, but also you're not paying for a paint job and waiting six weeks. So check that out. Subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate you watching. Um, I know these aren't short little clips, but I try and engage as much as I can with the audience. So if you have any planes you want to see detailed or, or do you have any questions, put them in the comments and uh, we'll see you next time. I think, I think the next trip is going to be Minneapolis again. So we'll see you in the bold north.